This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Rabbi Shurim Schwab Zatzal once said over a beautiful marshal to describe where we're holding today with our Moshiach. And he gave a marshal as follows. He said, imagine you have a chasana, you have a wedding, and everything is beautiful, the flowers have arrived, tables are set, the band is about to play, everything looks perfect, everything is beautiful. You're just missing one thing. There's no chasana and there's no color. <laughs> However beautiful the wedding may be, and set up to be, without a chosen and a kala, it's not a wedding. Says the Shimon Shwab Zatzal, the same thing is with us, Ba'olam Hazer, at this moment of time, without Mashiach. We're living in a world, maybe everything is set, everything is ready, but there's no chosen and kala. There's no chasana, there's nothing happening. And Abay Sai, the problem is, we often don't even realize that we're missing the chosen and the color. And that's maybe even worse. That's maybe even worse. Rabbi said, I'd like to bring to your attention today, Be'ez HaShem, a wonderful subject which I believe requires a little bit of chizuk, a little bit of thought into what we're going to discuss. There's a Gemara, famous Gemara in Shabbos Taf Laman Aleph. And the Gemara tells us as follows. We're all going to get up there after 120 years in this world in trying with Avodis Hashem, Torah, Mitzvahs, staying away from Averas, 120 years on this world. And we're going to get up there. And there's going to be a little bit of a test, a little bit of an exam. When we get up there, they're going to ask us a few questions. Right? A few questions. And the Gemara tells us what these questions are. It's actually interesting. The Gemara says there's four questions, right? There's four questions, pretty simple. Four questions. And not only are these only four questions, but um, these questions are answered by either yes or no. Simple. And to make things even better, you're even told the questions before you get there. How much better can it get? Number one, there's four questions. Number two, these questions are answered by yes or no. And number three, you're told the questions beforehand. How difficult can this exam be? So let's go, Rabbi Isai, through what the Gemara tells us are these four questions. And let's figure out, Lemaise, if we maybe have a few answers for this. Question number one, the Gemara tells us, is you're going to be asked this question after 120 years in this world. They're going to ask you a question. You did business. All right. Did you act honestly? Did you do business in the correct manner? Did you steal? Did you cheat somebody? Did you lie someone along the lines? Question number one. Okay. Question number two is, did you set aside time for learning Torah? Were you kuveya itim la Torah? Did you set aside specific learning times during your day, throughout the work time, after work, before work, whatever it may be? Right? That's question number two. All right? Question number three is... Did you, have to, did you put in the investment of having and raising children? Okay. Question number four. Did you eagerly anticipate the final redemption? Did you easily and think about on a constant basis the coming of Mashiach? So these are the four questions that every single person here is going to be tested on after 120 years in living in this world. I'd like to go through the four questions one by one in a quick manner, and then Be'ez HaShem will try to see if we can answer them properly. And we have to realize, right, because if you can answer these four questions in a good way, you're guaranteed a good seat up there, okay? So let's go through the good questions. Let's go. Let's start with number one. Did we do business honestly? All right, you know, so Boch HaShem. Klal Yisrael is becoming better and better. There's business ethics. There's Shurim in Dachish Mishpat. There's Dayonim. There's no internet sites that you can ask Shailis to Dayonim. Things have become a lot more sort of widespread. People are becoming a lot more known and knowledgeable in the areas of business ethics and doing things in a, in a, in a very you know, honest manner. So there is what to say. Maybe we can have a positive answer for did you do business honestly? Number one. Okay. Number two. Right, question number two was what? Question number two, did you, okay, did you set aside learning time? So, once again, what, what's, what's, what's unbelievable, Kalali Sol is growing and growing. There's Dafa Yomi, there's Mishnah Yomi, there's TorahAnytime.com, Boch Hashem. There's, there's, there's all over the place, there's Shi'urim everywhere. Wherever you go, whether it's on your phone, whether it's on the earphones, or MP3, everything, there's Torah everywhere. So, 
you know, we can probably answer, yeah, we probably did have times for set aside, hopefully for learning, maybe a different time we'll discuss what it means to be Kevei Itin, that Be'ez Hashem is a different day. Question number three, did we, well, we also in having children, so it's not always in our, you know, hands, but we try our best, and Be'ez Hashem, when the time comes, we will definitely try to have children, to bring them up in the proper manner, we'll definitely try. So I think for the first three questions, we can pretty much say that we have a sort of at least positive answer to these three questions. The question is when we get to number four, what are we going to answer? Did you eagerly anticipate the coming of Mashiach? So let me just tell you, by the way, beautiful thought, which I think I saw in one of the forum from, uh, from Rabbi, uh, I can't remember who it was even now, but whatever it was. So he writes over there the following thing, will come to me in a moment. So he writes over like this, if you look at the common denominator, there's a common thread that runs with all four questions. And that is, in the first three, for sure, you can see, these are things that occupy our life on an almost daily basis. In other words, it doesn't say, did you eat matzah on Pesach? It's a once in a year opportunity. Did we sit in a sukkah? Once in a year opportunity. It asks us questions about things that sort of are every single day. Did you learn every day? Did you do business every day? Having children, raising them every single day. Were Osik always in their tefillahs and their upbringing? It's constantly. Therefore, it would follow that the fourth and final question that we're going to get must also be something that's not a once-in-a-lifetime thing. It's not like, oh, did you think about Mashiach? Yeah, one time I thought about Mashiach. You know, I saw one was coming, coming down, whatever it was. No, no, no. This is something that's got to be on our minds all the time. This is a Hebrew boy side. Let me just tell you, an interesting Loshan in the Rambam. The Rambam writes in Perigid Aleph, Malochim Halocha Aleph. Listen to this. It's Rabbi he said, this is Halacha Lemaisa. Rambam. Says the Rambam. HaMelech HaMashiach. Osid Lama de la Harse, Malchus Dovil, Yoshnul, and Mimshala, Rishayna, or Boyna Hamigdash, Be'ez Hashem, the Mashiach will come, and we'll build a base Hamigdash, and everything will go back to how it was. Continues the Rambam. Listen carefully. V'cholmi she'enoi maimin boy. Someone that doesn't believe in this. Or mi she'enoi mechake lebiyosoi. Or someone that's not constantly waiting for him coming. Loi b'sha'a nevi'im hu kaife, ele b'toyras moishe rabbeinu. Says the Rambam haloch ele ma'isev. Every person sitting here does not wake up in the morning and straight after moide ani think to themselves, today's the day. Mashiach is coming. Comes to one o'clock. Mincha. Ooh, half a day. Mashiach hasn't come yet. Comes, you know, 11 o'clock at night. You're about to put your hands on the pillow and close your eyes. You think to yourself, another day without Mashiach. Says the Rambam, if you didn't do this to some level, not exactly to what I'm just saying, but to some ad- idea, some adraiga, then you are actually being kaifa in the Torah that Moshe Rabbeinu brought down from Har Sinai. Let me just explain to you what this means. Let me explain to you what this means. I'll give you an example. There was a Maisa, tremendous, beautiful. I've got some great stories. There was a Maisa with a, a big tzaddik. He walked into a Svarim shop and he, sta- he wanted to buy a kinnis. It was Erev Tishabav, and he wanted to buy a kinnis. And he starts handling with the price, you know, why is it this? I'll give me this off, 10%, 15%, I have a voucher, you know, for a discount. All right, he gave him a discount. He said, oh, so do me a favor, I have a question for you. Simple question. You come in here every week and you buy swan. You've never once asked me for a discount. Never once. All of a sudden, now you're busy, discount 10%, 15%, do me a better deal. Come on, what, what, what's going on? I said, I'll tell you very simple. Every safer that I buy from here, I'm going to use, hopefully, for a very long time. This is a kinnis. This is for Tishima for tomorrow afternoon. After tomorrow, it's finished. <laughs> I don't need it anymore. So why should I pay full price? Rabbi Isai, this is somebody that lived with this idea. There's someone that lived with this on a constant basis. They used to come to the Chovetz Chaim. They used to say, Rebbe, I've got this shayla. I need to go over here. And I've got to, need to move to this place. The Chutzlar, it's to here, there, and everywhere. And the Chovetz Chaim, who lived by Amun Abshuta, Gmamish Godla Ador, Tzadik Ador, the Chovetz Chaim says, I don't understand you. I don't understand you. Mashiach is coming. Why don't we ask Mashiach the shayla? They looked at him like, you know, yeah, all right, very nice, very nice. And I said, no, no, he, but he meant it. The Chovetz Chaim lived it. Mashiach is coming. So like, just ask Mashiach the Shaila. I mean, that's how he lived. They say over from the Yismach Moshe, wonderful. Yismach Moshe had such a tipisa of Yeshua. He was never Mashiach das a moment for Mashiach coming. And he said over, and he said over when he was Nifta, that he lived to an old age. He said when he was Nifta, if I would have known when I was younger, 
that as a, when I was a child, that Mashiach would not come when I was an old man, I would never have been able to live from all the tsar. It was only the betochen and constant belief of believing Mashiach is coming, Mashiach is coming. But if I'd have known all the way back then, I just, Pasha would not have coped. It wouldn't have managed. In fact, when the Yismach Moshe heard the noise, he, pushed it, he looked around to see what's going on, right? They'd be a maizah from Abzundal Salant. Abzundal Salant. Listen to this. He was davening Shemayin Esra, right? So we daven Shachris, Mincha, and Mariv, right? Three times a day. And we say in every Shemayin Esra, we daven for the coming of Mashiach, right? So Zundel Salant, Zundel Salant, what he did was every single time in the middle of Shemayin Esra, he was about to say, Es Tzemach Dovid, right? Es Tzemach Dovid, Dovid for Mashiach. He stopped, he opened his eyes, he looked around, and then he looked back into his head and continued doubling. And, it's, and, and the Tamidim who was standing by him said, Rebbe, what are you doing? In the middle of Shemayin Esra, you open up your eyes, you're looking around, what's Pshat? He said, what do you mean? <laughs> es Tzemach Dovid, I'm doubling for Mashiach to come. I don't want it to be a brocha levatola. So I need to open my eyes, check that he's not here. All right, he's not here. Now I can run for Mashiach. I mean, he lived this way. This is how they lived. This is how they understood what it means. One more shy, one more gewalde gemaisi, Ismach Moshe, tremendous tzaddik. Ismach Moshe had a son-in-law who was also a big guy and a big tzaddik. He lived far, far away. The family never saw him. One time the family got a telegram and they said that the son-in-law is coming to visit his father-in-law, the Yismach Moshe. The family erupted in a culture celebration. This is wonderful. This is so exciting. Our son-in-law is coming. We're going to see him. We're going to see how the kids are doing. We're going to see how he's doing. It's going to be great. So I told the Yismach Moshe he was very happy. And then he said, to him, just, you know, I'm going to go back to my learning. You let me know. So the preparations began. You know, you can imagine the banner, Sadiq Bola, it's all wonderful. And the Yismach Moshe didn't know anything of this. He was just sitting and learning in his room. And everybody's waiting at the, t- the appointed day when his son-in-law would show up. Everybody's waiting by the window to see when the horse and wagon is going to come in in order for them to start going to the street to welcome him. And the street, it was, it, was, it was a whole, you can't imagine, the whole town was starting to come. It was amazing. And finally they saw the wagon pulling up and they realized, oh, this Mahmoush's son-in-law, the famous Sadiq, the famous Goin is coming. They went into the, they went into the room of the Ismach Moshe and they said, Rebbe, he's here. He said, Moshe closed his Gemara. His serious face on, smiling, of course. He put his Shabbos clothes on, his Yontav clothes on. He came out of his room and he sees his son in law and he faints. He faints, Pasha faints. And they woke him up. Said, yeah, <laughs> this is son- he said, Yeah, but you came in, you said he's here. I assumed you meant Mashiach. Like he, he lived it. He pushed, lived it. He understood what it means every moment Mashiach can come. And Rabbi said, Let me tell you something. I'm not telling you, me this Hasidus. Chumras, nice things to do, says the Rambam. This is the echo of Aramuna. Aramuna is based on this. We have to and we must believe, not just a one time off thing. You know, everybody here, if I go down the room and ask everybody, you believe in Mashiach? Sure, of course. You know, some people say, just not yet. I'm just doing an extension to my house. So I just need to, you know, sort of finish off the extension of buying a new car. And, I, you know, I, I've got, you come, I'm not ready yet. And that's, by the way, some of the problem of Desta writes this in Helik Dalit. He says, you know, one of the problems with Mashiach is we're not, we don't even want Mashiach. Does anybody actually want Mashiach to come? Oh, you do, wonderful. I mean, you know, Baruch Hashem, we have, have a group of people over here that talk about Mashiach. But it's not about wanting Mashiach, it's about waiting. You know, somebody told me, they were building in this, in this, in this, in this country, building is, is whew, building, is building, is building, right? That's how it works over here, right? So there's something called Toy Fasaba, right? I don't know exactly what it is, but I think it means that the government have to come along, they have to do their inspections, as the building is built, then they give their issue, they give their, you know, guarantee, their seal, whatever it is, it's safe, you can go in, and then they start giving the apartments out to people that bought it. So you have people that buy an apartment, wait a long time for it to get built, once it's built, they're all excited it's ready, no, no, you've got to wait till Tovis Abba comes, because Tovis Abba means that the government have to come in and give their authorization. So somebody said to me recently, he was speaking to the contractor who was building his apartment. I think he's been waiting, he told me, three and a half, four years, whatever it was. They finally finished it. It's built. It's ready. So he keeps calling up the contractor. says, no, where am I getting the key? When can I start moving in my stuff and whatever? So the guy says, no, no, no. Tava Saba. She says, but when, when's that going to be? He said, let me give you a marshal, he said. It's like Mashiach, he said. This is what the guy told me. It's like Mashiach. He said, every single day, right? We, wait, we don't know when it's going to come, and every single day we wait for it to come, and, you know, it doesn't come at the end of the day. We sort of just have to wait till it shows up. So I said to him, you know, halavai, halavai, we waited for Mashiach as, quick, as much as we waited for the building permits to come in so we can move in. <laughs> now, boys, our problem is, is that we walk around thinking life is good, we're happy, we're settled, everything is wonderful. What do we need Mashiach for anyway? 
Do we have to look closer than here in Eretz Yisrael, the Ushalayim, or Kodesh, or anywhere around the world for that matter, at this moment of time, to see what Soros Klalisol are going through, to see what it would mean to have a Mashiach? But it's more than just an answer to your problems. Mashiach is not a matter of switching off the problem button. That's not what it is. It's Kloid Shamayim. It's when Mashiach comes, though, everyone will know about the Rabbi Nishalaylam. There'll be Klalisol, there'll be Torah, there'll be, there'll be everything. And we have to just not know it. It's not enough just to go around life thinking, yes, there will be a Mashiach. Eventually he'll come. When? Yeah, maybe today, whatever. No, no. Says the Rambam, this is a chiv on every single person. Says the Gemara, they're going to ask you this question. When you get up to Shamayim, and they're going to say, all right, how'd you do? Four questions. One, two, three, and it comes to number four. What are you going to say? Are you going to be comfortable enough to answer that question? Let me just end with one last question. Moedika Maisa, it's a famous Maisa, but how can we end such a share without this Maisa? With the Brisker Rav, the Beis Halevi was asked to be the Rav in Brisk. So immediately he said, no, I'm not interested. I've been, I've been a Rav already. I'm not interested in going into Rabonis anymore. And they pressured and they pressured and they pressured until they told him, Brisker Rav, Beis Halevi, there are 20,000 Jews waiting for you to become the Rav of Brisk. When he heard that, he says to his rabbits, and pack the bags, we're going to Brisk. When the Chofetz Chaim heard this story, he started crying. And the Chofetz Chaim said that if the Briskorov would go because of 20,000 Yidin, don't you think that the Rabbani Shalom would be Mashiach if we would all want Mashiach? If Be'emes, all of us would take want Mashiach to come and we'd wake up in the morning saying, oh, today Mashiach, we hope Mashiach, we want Mashiach, it's good for us to have Mashiach. Oh, then, Be'ez Hashem, the Rabbani Shalom will take give us Mashiach, we should be Zoycha Taka to fulfill this wonderful aloha and not chas to be mishal, so be'ez Hashem, we have what to answer when we get out there and fight on Hanukkah. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.